Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video and the proposed changes to PvP that we were promised on Friday that were supposed to come on Monday did actually come, but they came in the middle of the night and they were some pretty big ones. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about them. There's obviously a server reset, but these changes could have even more impact on the meta than the already pre existing set of changes. Some classes did not get away so scot free in terms of avoiding nerfs in this patch so you really want to stay up to date on this type of information if you want to make sure that you never miss out make sure to smash that subscribe button your support is greatly appreciated the first cat out of the bag the first class that is not getting off so easy is balanced druid now previously they were going to be nerfing new moon and full moon 20 percent alcan add up by five percent high winds by 50 percent umbral embrace by five percent but now additionally they're going to be nerfing incarnations damage bonus to nature and arcane by five percent each and I think that these stacked together for Star Surge, which comes to about a 10% nerf on Star Surge damage um, during Incarnation, if my math is correct on this, somewhere in and around that. So that is a pretty hefty nerf. On top of that, Balance of All Things is only going to grant 50% of its critical strike chance, which I think puts it at like 9% instead of 18, uh, might be wrong in the map. It's either eight or 9% uh, crit instead of 16 or 18%. Uh, percent. So you're gonna be critting a lot less and the base amount of damage on these spells during your incarnation window, which is you know the most important window of time for balance Druid. This is where the, I would say 90% of the time you're winning the game um, is coming from. So Boomkin meta with these changes now added into it, it might be passing over. It might be. It might be it. So all those that wanted to say goodbye to the Moonkin meta, I hope you appreciate your mage overlords um, and and give them the love that I know you will give them as they take their spot because these are pretty big ones. For augmentation evoker, they additionally added that fate mirror is only going to trigger is going to trigger sixty seven percent more often in PvP combat. This is the duplicating damage. It's like a 15% chance that your partner's damage will echo from Prescience, I think it's called. So Prescience is likely going to be a talent that you need to pick up on Augmentation. It seems like with the changes they're looking for Augmentation is to remove their defensive capabilities and lower their healing so they're not like a ranged tank spec um, and focus on their damage buffing effects and their personal damage. So this talent is likely going to give your teammate a lot more bonus damage. So Augmentation may not be gone. Um, it just may be focusing more on on damage as opposed to defense. Also, Devastation is getting some buffs. This got slipped through. Fire Breast damage over time effect is going to be increased by 20%. It was previously reduced by 10. So this is, you know, overall more than is now 30% damage increase on Devastation's Fire Breath damage over time effect might be you might want to note that you may want to dispel this, um, considering that's going to be hitting 30% harder at this point. We are seeing significant buffs to Arcane and Fire and Frost, um, although these are not new, um, as seen in the previous video. The big ones that I was looking to see if we would get updated were things like Nether Tempest and Living Bomb. These are the numbers they decided to go with, 150 and 300%. These are abilities that need a huge modifier, though, to have these spells feel relevant. So these numbers may not be enough, although you may want to give these talents a go because they're going to do a lot of instant cast and potentially cleave damage which is going to be really good in brackets like solo shuffle or battlegrounds um, so definitely check them out but these numbers might have to be readjusted um, into the future for sure for priest discipline priest is getting a nice juicy buff that got slipped in last minute last night penance's damage and healing is going to be increased by 15 percent in pvp combat so this is a really nice change uh, for discipline in terms of getting atonement healing out uh, and feeling more uh, viable here in the current competitive meta Although Angel's Mercy for Shadow is still going to be coming, coming through with a 25% nerf for Shadow uh, and changes to Mind Trauma and changes to Darkness Comes Light. They have decided to target Yulon's Grace's effectiveness in PvP combat, and this is a passively stacking shield that you take instead of Diffuse Magic. Now, I'm not 100% certain how many monks were actually taking this instead of Diffuse. It probably depended on the matchup, if you needed Diffuse or not. Um, but it was very similar to um, how powerful previous Warlock effects were defensively um, in terms of stacking up an Absorption Shield. So they are looking at you know lowering the Windwalker survivability a bit, considering how much damage um, they're actually getting in terms of buffs towards their sustain, although they are seeing targeted nerfs to their burst on Serenity. But this class gets a lot of uptime. So if its sustain is high, it's likely going to be a very 
scary class to deal with. Now, Warlocks, you guys are also getting some love uh, on this most recent patch update. Abyss Walker is now 100% effective in PvP combat, and I believe this is when you port, you take like 4% less damage. Now, it's going to be 8% less damage um, whenever you use a port. Now, Warlocks and Solo Shuffle, this is not going to matter to you because you guys don't port anyways. So, yep, sadly, you're not going to be missing out on that. Uh, Impish Instinct's talent is now also going to reduce the cooldown of Demonic Circle by 3 seconds up from 2. So, you're going to be able to port more frequently and get damage reduction when you port. So, Warlocks, please keybind your port because there's a lot of stuff to do with port. Um, and, yeah, this is going to be really important to incorporate. Now, Affliction, you are seeing a 230% increased damage on Haunt. And now I, I believe this is the direct damage of Haunt. Again, this this came in through at the last minute. Um, this could be really bursty, and I would definitely recommend trying Haunt talents. I know when I was playing Affliction, I really wanted Haunt builds to be viable. I just liked Haunt mechanically uh, for Affliction for a very long time. I don't know if the direct damage is really going to be enough to make it viable as opposed to the, you know, the damage increase on the target, but 230% is a pretty big number. So if this thing can hit like 100,000 plus, it's definitely going to be a lot more bursty um, and help out in terms of the overall viability for Affliction Warlock. So mobility, defensives, and damage buffs now for Affliction. Um, Warriors, you're still seeing the same buffs. There's nothing new here for you, but really significant in terms of overall damage increases, Overpower, Bladestorm, Mortal Strike, Execute, Onslaught, and surprisingly Ravager. I think I talked about this in the last video. Unfortunately, it seems like there wasn't any changes though for Frost Death Knight. This is a specialization that I was really expecting to see because they had set specific goals for Frost and Unholy to shift their damage from their cooldowns and more into their sustained damage. And I don't think that that mark was hit for Frost as nearly as it was for Unholy. And it just kind of seems like Frost is in the same place that it was last patch, but maybe a bit weaker, which is kind of just this cooldown grip one shot class um so i was really hoping to see some changes for frost dk in that sense i was also hoping to see some changes for outlaw rogue because even with the nine percent damage increase that they got moving into this patch it seems like outlaw rogue is still not uh you know not not in the strongest position another thing to also note though that i did miss which is important is that beast mastery uh changes are struck and will not be implemented and what this is is i believe 10 percent increase on barb shot damage if the, i think it's just the pvp specific one basically up here there's a bunch of hunter changes yeah that you see here barb shot is no longer decreased i think that's reduced so barb shot's getting like a 10 percent damage nerf but you're still going to get these which is insane 15% on barb shot 15% on cobra shot 15% on kill shot they didn't put anything here crossing these ones out i think that it's specifically talking about this one pvp specific one so beast mastery hunters are likely going to be really powerful they've nerfed some defensive capabilities of shadow priests so warriors hunters probably going to be a lot more viable and competitive now in this patch those are classes you really want to be looking out for um, and now with this burst damage nerf on balanced druid uh, on top of the utility nerf on balanced druid you know boomkins might be shifting out of the meta here to a pretty significant margin there was also a lot of tank buffs um that came through on the on the top side that i just want to mention here kind of last minute like things like prop warrior damage by seven percent Pro tank specs are actually really good uh, i've gotten a few lobbies with a couple of tank specs and those are ones that are kind of potentially creeping up um as being like sleeper really op i might have to try them on my stream if you haven't checked that out check the link in the description down below uh because yeah these these tank specs are starting starting to look really uh, to have a lot of potential so i'm keeping my eye on it uh, but it seems like they're not gonna let boomkins get away as the biggest update here warlocks got a little bit of love devastation got a little bit of attention here at the last minute uh and we'll have to wait and see whether or not we're moving into a hunter meta or a mage meta um with these patch changes that have come through so thank you very much for watching the video hope you enjoyed the update and i will see you in the next one